Hello everyone, this is Eunice Leung or some students call me Pon Leung. So in the previous video, we actually learned about inertia, the its definition, Newton's first law. So uh, a quick recap, every single object has its natural tendency to resist any changes in the state of motion. In another words to say, if the object is at rest, it will remain at rest. If it's actually moving, it will actually continue on to move in a constant velocity in a straight line. So only through the interaction with other objects can we change the state of motion of the object. But what is the relationship of mass and inertia? So we're going to go into two things that we're going to look into. That is the relationship of mass and inertia. And also this video will actually talk about the effect of inertia in our daily lives. Okay, so let's have a quick thinking cap right now. If I have two pendulum on a similar spring and I vibrate it with equal force, Similar spring means the thickness of the spring is the same, the diameter of the spring, the length of the spring, the material of the spring is the same, and I vibrate at equal force which means I move it up and down the same force. Let's assume that we can do that. Now, the blue pendulum, as you can see in the diagram, the blue pendulum has a bigger mass, so its size is slightly bigger compared to the red pendulum. So can we predict what actually happened? Once again, click pause and take some time to actually think what will happen, and then play back this particular video when you're done thinking. Remember, always write down your answer and have a paper and pen nearby you. So let's go into the simulation right now. All right. Now let's have a look at this particular simulation. Okay, in this particular simulation, the red color pendulum is smaller size compared to the blue color pendulum. And I click run. Alright, as you can notice, both hands are actually vibrating at the same force and the same speed. But from this particular simulation, you would notice that the red color pendulum is actually moving more obvious, oscillating more, compared to the blue color pendulum. Alright, this what does this particular simulation tells you? Okay, what does this particular simulation tells you about? What I can see is that the bigger the mass, alright, the more difficult it is to oscillate. Alright, the smaller the mass, the more easy for you to oscillate the pendulum. But what about in terms of inertia? Alright, in terms of inertia, what we can actually say regarding this particular simulation, alright, the bigger the mass, the bigger the inertia. Therefore, it will have more tendency to resist the change of motion. Okay. So let's go back to our slide just now. All right. So over here, the explanation is that the blue pendulum, the blue pendulum with higher mass will have more difficulty to vibrate compared to the smaller pendulum, the red color one. So a better explanation if this is an exam question is that the higher the mass, the more the inertia. Therefore, or hence, it is more difficult to vibrate the blue pendulum or change the state of motion for the bigger mass. Alright, so that is the explanation for the pendulum's case. Alright, so let's have a look over here. If Alright, you were to be playing catch with either a basketball or a bowling ball. Which ball will have a greater tendency to remain motionless when you try to throw it? And which ball will be more likely to keep moving when you try to catch it? Alright, do explain your answer. Again, please pause, take some time to think, alright, and then write down your answer. Then, in a short while, I will give you the answer out again. Alright, I hope you have already think about which ball will actually be more likely to remain motionless or which one will keep moving if you try to catch it. So what's the answer? Alright, the answer is actually both bowling balls. The explanation is here. The bowling ball is more likely to have more resistance to changes compared to the basketball because it has the mass is actually greater. Therefore, the bowling ball has greater inertia. So Again, recalling uh, mass. Mass is the amount of property, uh, amount of particle in an object, and mass has another meaning in physics. That is the property of an object that specify how much resistance an object exhibits to changes in its motion. Therefore, the greater the mass of the object, the greater the object's inertia. In this particular question case, bowling ball has a higher mass, therefore it has higher inertia. When it has higher inertia, it will have greater tendency to resist its change of motion. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Another higher order thinking question. Putting our thinking caps on today. Alright, 
if let's just say the same game were to carry out in deep space, will the result be the same? Alright, so again, take some time to actually think about this question by pausing this video and click play back again when you actually think about this. Now, I hope that you have already think about the answer. So if this game were to be carried out in deep space, will the result be the same? The answer is actually yes, the result will remain the same. In deep space, there is no particles, no air resistance, and deep space meaning for this particular case means that it's, uh, let's assume that it's very far away from the gravitational pull of the planets, alright? So there are no gravitational pull or other external forces acting on it. Assuming there's two astronauts wearing full uh, space suits, alright, and they're trying to push, uh, trying to play catch for the basketball and the bowling ball in deep space, okay? This particular game result will be the same. Why? Because the mass of the basketball and the bowling ball doesn't change whether you're on Earth, on the Moon, on Mars, or in deep space. Okay? The mass will remain the same. So when the mass remains the same, inertia will also remain the same. Therefore, in the deep space, bowling ball will still be the one to have a tendency to remain motionless and it will be more difficult to catch the bowling ball in the deep space, okay? So let's go to the next one. Alright, the next part of our video is actually the effect of inertia in our daily lives. Now let's look at this particular simulation. Okay, what will happen to the person on the chair inside the bus? You can see uh, there is this particular girl sitting on the chair. Okay, so this particular simulation, I want you to focus on the girl's motion when the bus is starting to move and when the bus stops immediately. Okay. Now let's take note of this particular simulation. As you can see in this simulation, the traffic light is at a red color right now, which means the bus is at rest. Right, our focus once again is on the girl who is sitting on the chair inside the bus. And I'm gonna press the but the green color button in front, alright, to make the bus start moving. Observe the motion of the girl on the chair. When the bus actually starts moving, the girl gets thrown to the back. Alright, now, right now, Observe the motion of the girl when I click the red color button to make the girl actually stop. The bus actually stopped, not the girl. Now, as you can see from this simulation, the girl actually moves in front. Okay, so let's get back to the question, uh, to our slides. Now, let's have a discussion again. When the bus is at rest and starts to move, what happened to the girl sitting on the chair? So the girl on the chair will move to the back of the bus as what we can see in the simulation. This is because the girl's on the original state of motion is at rest. Okay? When the All right. When the bus suddenly starts to move, what happened to the girl sitting on the chair? From the girl uh, from the simulation we saw that the girl on the chair will move to the back of the bus. This is because the girl's initial state of motion is at rest. So when the bus suddenly starts to move forward, the girl's inertia resists the sudden change in motion. And this actually caused the girl uh, on the chair to move to the back of the bus. Next, when the moving bus suddenly stops, what happened to the girl? Right? The girl on the chair's initial state of motion is moving together with the bus. When the bus suddenly stops moving, the girl's inertia will resist the sudden change in motion. This caused the girl on the chair to move forward instead. I hope you actually got it right. Now, how does the simulation relate to our daily life experience, especially when you're sitting in a vehicle? This particular uh, relationship is actually because the girl sitting on the chair represents a person not wearing a seat belt in a car. Okay? If you're not wearing a seat belt in the car, what actually happens? And what other accessories in the car that helps prevent the negative effect of inertia? Now, this particular simulation is actually similar sorry the sim the simulation whereby the girl is sitting on the chair is similar to a person sitting in a vehicle without wearing a seatbelt when a person does not wear a seatbelt in a car the car suddenly starts to move quickly 
the person will feel like being pushed backwards towards the seat. When the moving car suddenly breaks, the person's inertia will cause the uh, person to be thrown forward due to inertia. Now, what other accessories in a car that helps prevent the negative effect of inertia? Again, not wearing seatbelt, being thrown to the back, or when the car suddenly stops, actually move forward. What apart from seatbelt, what other accessory is that? Have you thought about it? Okay. I'm sure most of you will actually answer airbag, but the actual explanation that actu uh, the other accessories that helps prevent the negative effect of inertia, it's actually the headrest. The headrest helps prevent our neck from breaking due to the sudden change of motion, especially when the car starts to move forward quickly. All right, because when the car starts to move fast forward, all right, from rest, our body will move to the back. Without the headrest, our neck will actually go all the way to the back. So this will actually cause injury to our neck. So the headrest is actually to prevent the neck from breaking or injuring when there is a sudden change in motion in the car. Let's try the next question. In order to tighten a hammer head, normally a person would move quickly the whole hammer downwards as seen in the picture and hitting a hard surface. Using the concept of inertia that you just learned, try to explain how this works. Okay, take a time and actually uh, think how does this explanation. Now my explanation is this. When the whole hammer move downward and let the handle hit the surface. During the downward motion, both handle and the hammer's head initial state of motion is moving. So when the handle suddenly stops moving after hitting the hard surface, the hammer's head inertia will resist the sudden change in motion. This causes the hammer head to continue to move downward and make it tighter to the handle. All right, so you have to state the initial state of motion. Inertia causes the, to resist the sudden change. And what is the effect? Let's go to the next question. Using the principle of inertia, explain how to pour ketchup out of the bottle. Now, the question actually gives you a hint using the principle of inertia. To pour a ketchup out of the bottle, there is a lot of ways. Some people hit the bottom of the uh, bottle. Some people like me actually use a chopstick to actually stir the, uh, the tomato ketchup first before pouring it out. But over here, we are asking for using the principle of inertia. Explain how to pour the ketchup out. Now, so this is my explanation based on principle of inertia. Okay. With the cap open and the bottles opening facing downwards, move the whole bottle in a downward motion. The initial state of motion for the bottle and the ketchup inside is moving downwards. So when the bottle suddenly stops moving, the ketchup's inertia will resist the sudden change of motion. This actually causes the ketchup to continue moving downwards, pouring out of the bottle. So did you actually get that right? If you notice from the past few examples, the explanation to the answer is actually the same. Which is, the initial state, you have to mention the initial state of motion of the uh, object, either it's moving or at rest. And then there is a sudden change in motion, okay? So the inertia will resist the sudden change of motion causing for in this question's case causing the ketchup to pour out of the bottle now can you think of what is the pro and cons of inertia all right what are the benefits and disadvantage of inertia have a moment to think about this so what is the pros and cons of inertia for me the pros of inertia is to be able to dry a wet umbrella by spinning the umbrella quickly and suddenly stop. The water droplets on the umbrella will actually move away from the umbrella because of its inertia to be at rest. Next is actually to pour the sauce out of the bottle. And lastly, the negative effect of inertia is the uh, injuries that is caused from accidents of sudden breaking or suddenly start moving. Alright, so inertia has two types of question. 
Alright, the first is actually there's two objects of different mass. The solution to the question is the mass relates to inertia. Alright, the higher the mass, the higher the inertia. Therefore, it is more difficult to change its state of motion. The second type of question for inertia is observing how the uh, object move or interact when experience a sudden interaction with other object. The solution to the question is inertia is the tendency of an object to remain at rest or continue in motion with constant velocity. So that actually wraps up our top subtopic of inertia. Okay, uh, that is inertia is the tendency to remain at rest or continue on its motion with a constant speed and velocity in a straight line. Now, before I end, if you actually like my videos, okay, do make sure that you go to my YouTube channel, like and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all for my topic today and video today. That's all everyone. Bye!